hey, 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 welcome back. So in this video, uh, we are going to see how you can use the Rio web UI. So Rio is basically a pure Python framework, which allows you to create websites and apps. And this is basically the idea. And uh, we are going to see how you can use it. So, yeah, by the way, I have a new haircut. <laughs> so let's uh, enter our coding folder and create the Rio folder. And inside here, we are going to create the Rio virtual environment. And after that, we are going to install it. So in order to install Rio, we can use pip. What is going on? So source Rio bin activate dot fish. And then we can use the pip install Rio dash UI. And uh, once the installation is complete, we have the base framework. And what we can also do is to install an extra package that allows us to provide local support, which means that we can create local applications uh, apart from the web application. So let's install the Rio UI window. And then once it's complete, we should be able to issue the Rio new. And this Rio new command is going to create a new folder and initialize the project. So let's call this demo web app. And here we have a template from which we can choose. So we can create an empty folder, which is going to be the skeleton or a template for the AI chatbot, simple crude, multi-page website, and etc. etc. And uh, let's uh, select the one. And basically we want to create a website. So now if we check with the tree, <coughs> the demo, web app folder, you will see that this is how the structure looks like. Let's spin up our favorite editor. So here we are. We have the Rio.toml, which is the project uh, description. We have the readme initialized. We have the init.py and we have pages, which is the sample page, and we have a components folder that is just a placeholder, and we have the assets. So after this is done, what we can do is to open up a new terminal window, and after navigating into the demo web app, we can use the Rio run and it is going to spin up the application and if you copy and paste this URL <coughs> we should be able to load it so spread the word and there we go so this is how it looks like Wow, we have to deploy and so on. So this is uh, kind of the initialization phase. And we can also have this custom project for the AI chatbot. So let's try and initialize that one. So Rio new and custom chatbot and we select the two, and it is going to be a website. So now, if you go back to NeoVim and the nerd tree refresh, 
we should be able to see the custom chatbot folder. So here in the chatbot folder, we have the requirements and so on. And if we navigate here to the custom chatbot, we can use the Rio run. And as you can see, the module was not found because we have to install it. So pip install open AI. And now if we run the project and visit the website, let's load it. What you can see is that we need an open AI API key for this to work. So let's navigate here. <clears throat> we should try to log in. Yeah, and we can create the demo API key and the default project. Let's copy this. <coughs> so now <coughs> we should be able to go to the appropriate section. Let's search for API. or API key, no, components, and in it, ah, here we are. This is the placeholder for the API key. <coughs> so that's my API key. <laughs> and we should be able to restart this application. And as you can see, we can chat with AI. So what is your opinion about Rio Web UI? And run. <clears throat> so with this API key, we are able to ask the AI, oh, you exceeded the concurrent quota. What the? Okay, so maybe I should upgrade to the appropriate plan. So activity, API requests, so thinking thinking and we got the error so uh, you need the appropriate uh, let's say uh, API key or plan for this to work and finally what we want to do is to go back one level higher and Rio uh, new and we want to create the web app and this is going to be the simple crude and it's going to be the website and if we navigate to the web app and use the Rio run and debug mode okay we don't have the error message so if we go here you will see that this is how it looks like. So this is just like a simple menu item or whatnot, but it seems to be good. And of course, if we want, we can customize it. So let's uh, go back here and the nerd tree refresh root and go to the web app and inside the web app we have the data models which is using the data classes so maybe it could use pydentic this is how the list looks like we have the init and this is going to be the 
initialization for the app with the theme and under the pages we have the crude page which defines the menu item and how you can interact so basically that was all I wanted to show you about this framework I think it's pretty neat and I'm currently working on something for my main job in this maybe later if and when I have time I will create a more complex example that was all see you in the next one